tonight, and I'm being told that we are ready to start the Super Mario 64 randomizer. Well, welcome everybody uh, back to GDQ. We are here uh, doing a Super Mario 64 randomizer race. Uh, you want to go ahead and introduce our runners? We'll introduce ourselves once we get kicked off. So. Of course, of course. We have 360 Chrisom, Simply, and Punkation racing each other in Super Mario 64 70 star randomizer. Very good, very good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this kicked off right now um, so that we can jump right into it. So I'm going to need y'all's help. Uh, so we're going to count it in. So in three, two, one, go. All right, so I'm Author Blues. I'm Bird650. And this is Super Mario 64 randomizer. Uh, this is a really exciting randomizer. It's a lot of fun. And honestly, I want the crowd to really get into this one. Uh, the way this randomizer ends up working, the way all of these stars and coins get moved around, usually there's some pretty crazy things going on. Um, and so we're probably going to see a lot of really awesome gameplay. So if you see something, pop off. Exactly. And. Right away, you can see there's already routing differences here. We have, uh, I believe, yeah, Chrism. Chrism. Yeah, Chrism, Chrism already jumped going. directly into the bomb on battlefield painting. So there's only two paintings you can actually, or two stages you can get into right out the gate. There's the bomb on battlefield painting, and you can also optionally choose to go ahead and drain the moat and check what's in the vanish cap stage. Exactly. And here in 70 Star, you're typically going for the fastest uh, routing here. Uh, what you're looking for is level loops, and we'll talk about that a bit later as more levels are discovered. Uh, but you're looking for levels that can link up together so you can get some quick stars in succession and go back into stages as fast as you can. So a pretty common choice here for when JRB is found, uh, Jolly Roger Bay, is to go ahead and uh, bring up the ship. Uh, that's going to give them a lot more options going forward for other stars um, that they can get. And so you can see right here, Chrism is instantly going into the ship uh, and grabbing the star that's in here. Exactly. Now, certain stages are obviously better than others. Uh, a stage like a HMC is a good stage because it has a lot of freestanding stars, and freestanding stars are just stars that are already spawned in the stage uh, that are free for the taking. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about how this randomizer works. So this randomizer is a single ROM randomizer, which means you don't have to run it through a generator or anything like that. Uh, you just put in a seed number and you go. We're, we're running on seed right now. Um, and, and what ends up happening is it moves around pretty much everything that's not nailed down. So pretty much everything that's not nailed down are things like the stars, yellow coins, red coins, um, events. So a lot of the event stars, the boxes, they completely move around. And the randomizer does a really good choice of trying to make sure that it places things in locations where uh, they will be accessible. Occasionally, you'll run into something that's a little hard to get. Um, but most everything actually turns out to be accessible. The other thing that does a really good job of randomizing is, um, and, and it's a little bit silly, but it randomizes your location that you start. And it's not just the first time you enter, but every time you enter, it's a completely random location. And that can make a pretty big difference about how you route your way navigating a level, depending on the level. You know, sometimes you're going to spawn right next to a star, and so the choice is to just grab that star. Sometimes you're going to spawn in a really difficult to reach location otherwise, and so you take advantage of having that position in the stage in order to try to find uh, what's actually accessible over there and sort of write some things off at the time. Mm -hmm. um, now, each of these stages actually has a set number of freestanding stars, box stars, event stars. And that hasn't changed. So if a stage has, for instance, three freestanding stars, it's going to move those three freestanding stars around within that stage. Exactly. And that's what's so important about finding that loop that has levels involving a lot of freestanding stars, so that way you can go for those stars right away. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't, they, they're not going to probably be choosing to get a lot of the 100 coin stars. Probably not going to be choosing to get a lot of the red coin stars in a lot of these levels um, because they only have to get 70 stars. It's actually required in randomizer to get 70 stars because the door to the endless staircase doesn't even open until 70 stars. Exactly. Um, so that's really the, the smallest amount you can get. But for the most part, they're going to be going for quick events. They're going to be going for freestanding. They're going to be going for boxes. We're probably not going to see a ton of the coins and the red coins. Exactly. Another thing to keep in mind, too, with this randomizer is that the star door requirements are also randomized. So in the, the normal game, Womps takes about only one star to open, but in Randomizer, it could take anywhere from one to 15 stars, maybe even 20 stars. So it's all about routing for what you know is available, and so you can account for how many stars you need from stages beforehand. And that comes with its own issues, because we talked about it that when you enter a painting, it actually takes you to a, a random stage. That, that, that randomness is fixed by the seed, but, um, you know, for instance, we entered Bob on Battlefield here, and it took us to JRB. You get kicked out of the actual stage's painting. So you enter the Bob on Battlefield stage, or the Baba Battlefield painting, 
painting and you come out of the JRB painting. And the issue is sometimes you're gonna find yourself exiting a painting and actually being locked in that room. You don't even have the stars necessary to leave that room. So you really have to figure out how to navigate the castle by finding these loops, finding these painting loops. Do you actually want to talk a little bit about what we mean by those painting loops? Yeah, of course. So with the painting loops here, um, like Arthur mentioned before, when you hop into BOB in this seed, for example, uh, you get thrown into JRB. Uh, we're looking for stages uh, like a tall, tall mountain, uh, uh, Snowman's Land, uh, HMC, those stages that really give you a lot of free stars that are quick and easy. You don't have to do a lot of those events for. And at the end of the, uh, of the loop, you want it to loop back to the first painting you entered, so that way you can continue to just re-enter the same painting, uh, keep grabbing stars as you move through the loop. Uh, and eventually, hopefully you don't have to grab too many additional stages that are outside of that loop, so that way you can have a fast route and be the most optimal you can. And since all of the stages actually move around, you know, we get actual stages inside the Vanish Cap slot, and Vanish Cap might appear in another stage. Um, you also have to keep in mind that that means that there's actually two additional locations where you can find stages that are kind of inconvenient. So the main one is the metal cap stage. Oh yes, metal the, cap. Where right. The place, uh, whatever you find in metal cap can make a big difference on how that seed actually goes. If you enter the metal cap stage and it's a full stage with stars, that means every single time you have to enter Hazy Maze Cave and navigate to the metal cap location just to enter that stage again. So if you find a stage, for instance, like you mentioned, Tall Tall Mountain, where there's a ton of really great stars that you're going to want to grab, your only choice is to continuously enter Hazy Maze Cave every single time. Yeah. Um, so and actually, that... I just want to talk about it really quick, too. Uh, Chrisum had just paused there, and you're going to see our runners do that quite often here because at pausing brings out the camera far enough to where they can look around without having to spend too much time in the uh, the see up black two cam to look around. Uh, it's a great way for a stage like a rainbow ride. If you don't know if there's a star in the maze, you can hit the pause button right outside of the maze and see the full maze there and, and gauge if there's a star in there or not. Yeah, there's quite a few stages where that pause cam actually makes all the difference. You can tell the difference between a runner who's done a lot of randomizer and a runner who hasn't um, because they really do make really good utilization of the uh, pause cam. Uh, here we're seeing simply taking on the, the wing cap star. Um, this one can be pretty difficult because, uh, as you know, you can't really gain height with the wing cap. So if, you, if you're not paying enough attention, if you make a mistake, if you miss one of them, there's no way to get back up to it. You just have to restart the whole stage. Yeah, exactly. There is a risk with it, as always, but uh, it's up to these runners to adapt. That's what we're looking for here as you enter a level memorizing where things are and adapting to where you spawn so that way you can have the most optimal movement. It's different every time, so it's really tough. So we're getting comfy here in the aquarium. Punkation uh, taking on not, not too challenging of a level. This is uh, one of those red coins that we'll see. Another thing that's kind of interesting, a lot of people don't understand um, or maybe don't know how Super Mario 64 is put together, but for some particularly large levels, you sometimes end up with areas of the level that are separate loading zones. Um, the the randomizer actually maintains the things that are in those areas the same. So for instance, the two halves of Dire Dire Docks are actually separate loading zones. So if you wanted to get red coins in Dire Dire Docks, none of them are going to appear on the first half because they're all in the second half. And it actually makes red coins a reasonable star to get in Dire Dire Docks as opposed to some other choices. Exactly. So it simply is uh, taking taking the chance to try to get red coins and vanish. You know, it's a time commitment trying to go up this slope and 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 grab them uh, when there might be other better choices. Um, but it's kind of a guaranteed one. There's so so few places that red coins can spawn in this level that you know that given enough time, you can get these. Right, and that's where you gotta gauge whether it's worth it or not, depending on what you've seen already from previous levels. Maybe you wanna go for a star like this that's a guarantee that might cost you a little bit more time, or you might wanna risk it in another level that has a more difficult star. You don't know if it's there or not. Uh, it's really up to the runners. Uh, to adapt, like we mentioned earlier. The randomizer did not improve the manta ray rings. No. Prism's just good at it. <laughs> and they are very much the same. Nicely done. So because of that issue of sometimes finding yourself locked in an area because you maybe don't have the star requirements for the doors, uh, you'll see the runners often going into a stage to uh, exit course and head back to the main lobby of the castle. That's a pretty common thing to do. Exactly. And TTC right there, a fantastic stage because you have those five freestanding stars that could be anywhere. And sometimes you hit a jackpot where you can have three or four stars on one level of the clock and you know exactly where to go every time.
Now, interestingly about TTC, um, you, you probably are already aware of the fact that uh, what, what the clock hands are at when you enter it uh, decides what the function of the clock actually is in the stage. But since you're not going into the clock face to go into TTC, the way it actually works is that uh, whenever they go into the clock face, it locks it in place. So you can find yourself in a situation where you really only have to hit the TTC clock face one time to go in there, and then you have the perfect setting for TTC going forward. So. Exactly, exactly. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Toad uh, stars are also, um, their, their requirements are randomized as well, and so they'll appear um, once they have met the requirements for them. Um, the upstairs toad still spawns at 35. Right. So it's just their placement will be different, obviously, amongst okay. the castle, but their star requirements should still okay, be Okay, okay, so that hasn't been randomized. Right, that hasn't been. And MIPS is the and same MIPS way. MIPS is well. the same way, 15 and, and 50. And it, that one will also spawn in the same exact spot. So. Yeah, MIPS does not move around, but the toad stars do. Um, interestingly, uh, there's a lot of toads in the castle who don't offer stars, and so. Uh, you have to figure out which one's the correct one and, and really keep your eyes out for whether or not one that wasn't there before is there now. That's exactly. that's kind of a, a hard thing sometimes is you're you're really late into your randomizer uh, playthrough. You're, you're really late into the randomizer run and you're like, I haven't seen any new toads or at yeah. least I haven't kept track of them. Well, one of the things that also can happen is that an upstairs toad can spawn where Bowser, uh, the Bowser door oh, is. Oh, that's true. And you cannot open that door yeah, in the randomizer. Yeah, if you're counting, if you're counting on that last toad star to be the one that's going to get you into the endless staircase, a toad can spawn in the endless staircase. Right. So. And in the, the base game, you can go in there at any point and just says that, you know, you have the infinite stairs. In randomizer, you actually cannot open that door until 70 stars are met. Uh, so if you, if you have a toad or two locked up there, then you're out of luck. Uh, it's also good to note that Bowser in the Sky is uh, a vanilla location. It's where it's located normally, uh, so that way you can't come across it just in a random level here. Exactly. Yeah, so these, these level loops that we're looking for here, um, a self loop, you know, a stage being in its correct location, which is not that uncommon, um, you know, in a given seat, you kind of expect w at least one stage to be in its normal location, just, you know, mathematically. Um, that's, that can be very helpful. You know, that sort of really tight loop is a great way to get a bunch of stars on the board, open up doors. If you can find that, um, I mean, sometimes it might even be worth getting some disadvantageous stars in that kind of stage just so you can knock them out really exactly. quickly. Exactly. I actually want to bring up something for uh, Christmas screen here. Uh, in Lethal Lava Land, you have the star where you have to kill the three bullies to spawn the bigger bully and get the star from there. Uh, in Randomizer, obviously, the bullies are all shifted about, but you can actually tell which bullies you have to kill because there'll be sparkles coming from them. So if you just look for the correct bullies around there, you'll be able to tell and then go from there. Yeah, earlier earlier versions of this Randomizer did not have that. It was very nope. interesting figuring out <laughs> what was necessary and what wasn't. In fact, uh, early versions of the Randomizer also did the same thing for uh, tiny huge island uh, when you were looking for the piranha plants oh because God, the piranha yes. plants don't actually appear until you get right next to them yep. and so you'd have to scrub every single spot on the entire stage in order to find all five of them now they leave behind sparkles in their locations and it's very easy to spot them so that's really cool exactly and also the addition of having the star number above the star really helped as well uh, previous versions did not have that so when you had a star that spawned from say killing the womp king uh, you wouldn't be able to tell it would be able to be mixed up and it's hard to see sometimes so it's good to have the star a number above the stars now okay so we've we've been going on and on about this really great randomizer so how are our runners doing right now we've got uh, all three of them pretty much neck and neck right now um, we have found a lot of the stages already uh, we, we certainly haven't found all of them at this point and that's fairly normal um, that you you end up having some holdouts that you don't find for quite a while exactly um, but but our runners have actually found quite a few of the stages and have, have traveled quite a lot of the castle at this point I've seen quite a number of stages at this point exactly so at this point I'm sure our runners are currently while they're running through the levels are currently trying to route out the levels they already have seeing what's the most optimal path to take it's still early obviously uh, but once they start getting closer to that 70 star count they can start taking out stars that they don't really want to go for from certain stages and focusing in on the ones they really do want to go for One stage I'm looking forward to as well is Rainbow Ride because one of the worst spawns you can have for Rainbow Ride will be on top of the roof for stars to be. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, you're not going to spawn there. And every time that But when you do, it feels so oh good. Oh, God, it feels so good. There's yeah. nothing in the world that feels better than walking into Rainbow Ride and just being on the top of the house 
Yeah. Everything is perfect at that moment. Yeah, you can clear out the roof right away. Uh, the unfortunate thing is if you don't and there's stars up there, you would have to take the carpet and that just eats up so much time. Or just do carpetless. Yeah, it's, it's as easy as that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, this randomizer has a lot of really great quality of life improvements. Things like actually numbering the chest yeah. wasn't always the case. Um, Those are some dark days. <laughs> though I think that was before they started moving the chest, so. Oh, that is true, yes. So the, the three toads that we mentioned, they actually stay in their original loading zone. So um, there there is one basement toad and they're in the vanilla game there's one in upstairs and there's one in tippy and since upstairs and tippy are the same loading zone um the two toad stars up there will stay in that area um, exactly. so you could have two in tippy you could have two in upstairs um i always love how well they end up spawning and hiding you know hiding behind little pillars in, in oh, snowman's yeah. <laughs> uh in the snowman's land room things like that yeah, the worst one is when you find him uh, where the, you have to knock down the pillars for the Banished Cap entrance. We actually just saw Chrism there. He's, he's making really good use of the pause camera strats. Uh, stars just hide in the worst places in some of these stages. Um, it always tries to make sure it places stars in locations that you can reach them. But, you know, a slope that's going just like that straight down the mountain, that's technically, that's technically possible. It is, yeah. Some of these you'll see uh, in, like, Snowman's Land, for example, you'll see at the very top of the hills there, near where the, the wall, invisible wall is, and you're just wondering, how do you like, how do I even get the height for that? There's no wind cap or anything, it's tough. It really challenges you to make some interesting movement. As we see Simply here going for the metal cap, we'll see how he can handle the red coins here. The red coins can be a little bit temperamental in, in Metal Cap, especially if one spawns um, really close to the, the exit. Exactly. Um, if it's going that direction, it can be a little bit tough to, to get that and, and survive it without the actual Metal Cap itself. Exactly. Great movement here from Simply, though, yeah, uh, using nice. the walls to sort of jump back to the platform so he doesn't have to reset himself in the water over and over. Yeah, that was very nicely done. And able to grab the star, too. That was very nice. Simply spilling it right now. <laughs> and we have Punctation going for the wing cap star right now. Trying to grab that star that spawned in a really awkward position, which is really common in stages like this. You know, you have a lot of that geometry, uh, tight slopes that you wouldn't otherwise want to climb. The randomizer says, sorry, that's technically a place you can get to, so we're putting a star there. I want to bring up another interesting change, too, with the Mario Wings Over the sti uh, Sky stage. Normally, when you fall off that stage, you actually spawn out back outside into the castle courtyard. Inconvenient. Yes. Oh, and you see, I didn't see the starter requirement on that one, but obviously it wasn't 20 there. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're going through that stage, if you do fall off, uh, you actually respawn outside of the Wing Mario um, stage. So it's an interesting change. People can use that for routing purposes, optimizing it. And, makes uh, it viable for loops. So this is exactly. a great thing right here. So uh, Chris went ahead and found the the star box at the top of the slide. You really hate to see them as you're going down the slide. It's a huge waste of time and sometimes can be a little bit temperamental to grab it as you're going down. Definitely. So Chris is now going to check the Bowser in the Dark World stage and going back here to see if he can pull off a good time on the slide. Here we go. Well done. Here we go. So Bob has a uh, Bob on Battlefield has a lot of really good stars to get. Some of them can be really costly, though. Um, Bob on Battlefield is a nice stage to find because it's uh, it's a fairly tight stage. You can solve it really early. You don't have to come in here with a bunch of caps to be able to do everything. Um, but it's just a lot of costly stages. And, you know, if, if these runners were doing 120 star, if they were doing a non-stop variant, that may not be a big deal. But here in 70 star, you really have to weigh the cost uh, of how much time it's going to take you to do each one of those individual stars. Exactly. And you can get into a situation where you find three or four secrets right away in a, in a BOB stage. And then you're like, okay, well, I have three or four. I should go for the fifth one. 
and it could take forever to find it in a stage like that. So you got to weigh your options out, make sure you have the guaranteed stars before you start going into those kind of stars. So every stage has a set number of boxes, and a set number of those boxes are going to contain stars. Uh, and so it's not it's not obvious whether or not you should check each and every box. You know, uh, the boxes are going to spawn in locations that are accessible, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you want to invest the time to go get each and every one of them. You know, Chrism just saw here uh, that that box was back there that he missed it. He's got to go back for it. Maybe another one up. Maybe it's the star. And another one up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is really what you were talking about right at the beginning, is that this is all about adaptation. Um, because, you know, you can look at a stage and say, oh, bob on Battlefield typically has uh, easy stars to get. Maybe they're slow. Maybe typically uh, Shifting Sandland has difficult stars to get. But when you enter the stage and you take a look around, um, you know, you're met with whatever you have, whatever the randomizer's given you. And so that stage that might typically be difficult may be very straightforward this time. Or a stage like Womp's Fortress might have, you know, all of its red coins, right, on the death slopes. Oh, yeah. So, That's a common thing, too, is if once we get into Womp's Fortress, we'll let you know what we're talking about there. But they're often on those death slopes, and you have to route it out properly. So we can see right here, uh, these sparkles are making it so much easier for them to find what they're they're looking for. Uh, the randomizer did add the sparkles for um, the secrets as well, which is is very nice to see. Exactly. Um, but almost, I would say, it's certainly necessary for randomizing the secrets, but it's extremely helpful as well for the piranha plants. Nice work by Chris to get the wiggler clip there, and he gets in the entrance. So uh, Punkations here in Wet Dry World. Wet Dry World is a fantastic stage, by the way. Probably one of the few where the 100 coin star is a really viable option. Um, in fact, I would argue that for 70 star, uh, Wet Dry World is pretty much a no-brainer to just go ahead and get all the stars. Yeah, definitely, um, as well as Womps. I think those are the two you're, you're definitely going for. Yeah, red coin star in, in uh, Wet Dry World, you're guaranteed all the coins are going to be in town, so they're all pretty tight together. And in addition to that, uh, while you're doing the 100 coin star, while you're trying to get all the coins from this area, you might as well just find the secrets. So. Exactly. Now, if you're combining it with the 100 coin with the red coin in Wet Dry World, the only risk you run is if you don't have the vantage cap if a star or if a coin spawns behind that cage. And that can happen. Yes. And then you're just kind of looking at it, saying, okay, come back later. <laughs> Same with Dire Dire Docks. You know, sometimes you will actually still manage to get a star or a coin somewhere inside that, um, the, the, uh, the, the rail box oh, yeah, underwater. Yeah. Um, and so you really do have to make the choice ahead of time when you enter the vanish cap stage. You can say, well, hitting the hitting the switch is probably not necessary. It's a little bit of a time waste, but you'd hate to be that guy who completely skipped the vanish cap uh, switch, and then you enter one of those stages and you just see, oh, I guess I'm just not getting a star here, huh? <laughs> exactly. Do you have it's a like moment for, for the secrets here with the 100 coin. Do you have a moment for me to cut in here for? Absolutely, yeah, please. For yeah. yeah. I'd just like to say we just passed the $40,000 mark on the 50,000 for one mine hard mode. So 10,000 more to go. Let's try and get that done before the end of this run. Yeah, go for it. I hear the runners are really handsome. Uh, I also have a $200 from Rooster Towel who says almost 1.5 million with a smiley face. Yeah, you can keep going for, uh, for a few. Okay, we've got $120 from BDEF, who says, $120 for 120 stars. My mom passed away from cancer seven years ago, and I appreciate Simply and all the GDQ runners help to make sure no family has to experience that feeling in the future. So we just saw there on the cruiser, there was a yeah. box right above that star. Yeah. I'm really curious, because uh, if that box right above the star is the star box, that might just have ruled out. That potentially can cost a very important star there. We'll have to see if there's another box around that uh, the runners go for here, but that could rule out a very important star there. Important to note that um, both of the paintings in the wet dry, or sorry, the tiny huge island room actually go to the same stage. Uh, it would be a little bit strange if they didn't. One of the things that can really trip you up in that room is uh, you typically just immediately make a beeline for the small painting. Yes. Or, or for you, the huge, anyway. The, the, you typically make a beeline for that painting. Sometimes a toad is gonna be hiding down one of those other hallways you just wouldn't think to look down. Exactly, exactly. You have to really scan every corner. So 
Like Simply's doing a very nice job here. We'll see what happens next. Have we seen what's in Hazy Maze Cave yet? Have we seen what stage is in there? Um, I don't recall. Okay. Well, I've got my fingers crossed for good news, yeah. you know? Yeah. The, well, the best case scenario <laughs> is going to be one of those stages like Aquarium or one of the caps or, uh, you know, Wing Mario over the rainbow, something where you only have to come there one time, so it's not, there's no uh, returning over and over and over, which can be pretty costly and annoying. Yeah, I, I don't believe anybody has checked the actual Metal Cap entrance yet. I mean, there's no reason to, especially in a 70 star, until you are getting thin on stars and locations to go to, but... So what are your thoughts on JRB in a, in a randomizer run? They added more coins, so typically it does not have very many coins, um, and so there are more coins in the stage, so maybe 100 coin is slightly viable depending on what is placed where. Um, but in general, what kind of stars um, do you think w we would see in that stage typically? I think definitely you're getting the, the box star. Mm -hmm, you're getting absolutely. the freestanding star. Uh, and there's also the chance of you, if you, especially if you can get ship flip, you can go for the chest inside the ship, and which can lead you to getting the eel as well. So typically you could get four stars from there. Uh, there are some better options, but that's where you really weigh your options and see how this, the run is going, how the seat is going. Right. Uh, you might have some stars that are locked out, like maybe Rainbow Ride has a ton on the, the roof there, so you would actually go in to JRB and get those chest stars instead and go for that eel star. Uh, typically, though, if you have a really good seat going, I would say two for sure. You can go for three if you want. Sure. Uh-oh. Ooh, that could have been a lot more dangerous there. Yeah, TikTok clock is bad news. If you fall, somehow it seems like nothing will ever catch you, typically. So. <laughs> yes, exactly. It does seem like this TikTok clock has a lot toward the top, though. So that's going to reward the runners who are fortunate enough to spawn near the top over and over exactly. uh, and punish the ones who have to make the climb over and over. And again, that's what it comes down to. Um, you know, you have to adapt on the fly. If you enter TikTok clock and you take the chance and you see you spawn at the very bottom, and you know there's nothing left down there. I don't know, maybe you just dip. Maybe, maybe you jump out and try something else. Like, why would you bother climbing all the way to the top when another entrance might get you in a better position? Yeah, that's very true. It's, uh, it, com it all comes down to adaptability, really. It's, it's amazing. There's a, there's a really nice mix in this randomizer of stars that are... Um, Sort of you can trust them, they're consistent. Things like, for instance, that event star right there. The rings aren't moving, so you you, you go to the same spot and it's gonna spawn somewhere gettable. So this star is one that you're, you know, the one that we just saw simply doing right here. You're, you're probably gonna see everyone do through the jet stream. Exactly. Um, but, you know, you have these other stars like Piranha Plants uh, in THI where, you know, maybe I've seen a few of them. Maybe I've been in the stage a few times. I've, I've located two, three, four of the sparkles. Do I invest the time to try to find the fifth one? Exactly. Or do I just, you know, go on to something a little more trustworthy? You know, I mentioned earlier, Bob on Battlefield has a lot of trustworthy, but uh, kind of costly stars in time. But I mean, how hard is it to just race Koopa the Quick to the top? And then you get a star that you can pretty much guarantee is gonna be somewhere easy to grab, right? right. That's a That's a, that's an easy one, exactly. um, even if it costs you like a minute to get it, so. Yeah, and now I, I would have to argue one of the worst stages to actually see is a uh, BBH here, because having- There's so much gated behind yes. Go on a Ghost Hunt. Exactly, Go on a Ghost Hunt, you, that's just one of the worst ones, trying to find five boos that are anywhere in this place. It, it's a huge place to look, The entire each room individually, you have a basement, you have the roof, it's- it's not good. Typically, if you're lucky, you can get three stars there. Uh, you get the boo on the balcony, you have a freestanding, you have the giant eye in the room. After that, it, you won't see our runners go back there. So our runners have, I mean, as far as I've seen, been making good choices and haven't had a lot of real big mistakes. So we, we're just seeing Prism right here spawning on the roof. He gets to get a, a full picture of what's going on up here. Um, now he knows what's up there. He can make choices in the future. Doesn't have to come back there if he doesn't want to, only if he needs uh, whatever's up there, so. Exactly, and typically you don't go for the red coins here in Rainbow right. in a 70 star, so. Yeah, absolutely, that, they can be anywhere. We see uh, Simply here going for MIPS and checking a toad along the way. It's just good to find out. Yeah. Just barely missed him. But as I was saying, you know, Simply, Run right, oh, away with it a little bit. I think he's found some loops early, gone ahead and invested the time in them. The randomizer is a little bit interesting in that it's not necessarily obvious who's winning just looking at the star count. That does not tell the whole story. Um, you know, some runners have maybe already identified some easy to get stars. Some may have already invested themselves in some ones that are going to be troublesome later, but they know that they're going to want to go for them. Exactly. 
So it all depends on what the runners have picked, whether they've gone for the harder stars first and then come back for the easier ones as they go through the levels and see where they're located. Um, so it, it, like you said before, it really depends. We, we don't know who really is going to run, run away with this one. It could be anybody. See, and that, that's, that's great paying attention there uh, with Chrism. Uh, Chrism saw, hey, there's a toad there that wasn't there before. Exactly. I mean, right away. 35 stars, got to check. In, in Randomizer, now you don't have to have the keys in order to access the different parts of the castle. So there's really no reason for them to fight Bowsers. So they're not going to fight Bowser 1, they're not going to fight Bowser 2. Uh, the only Bowser they're going to need is to finish off the game. So uh, that's a, a great time save. The only benefit for them, and this is not going to matter for these runners, but the only benefit is that if you do beat uh, Bowser in the Fire Sea, um, that does uh, clear out the sub in... in uh, uh, dire Dire, dire Docks yeah. and go ahead and give you the moving um, poles and things like that. So it's not that there's no reason to do it, it's just not strictly necessary and these runners aren't going to need that. Exactly. It looks like we're going to get a metal cap check potentially here okay. on Simply Side. I'm excited to see what it is. Yeah, this is going to be a big one here. They're hoping to see a secret stage out of this. So he's taking a look in the room. The room can have stuff all the same and we see Womp's Fortress. This is a stage they really, really are going to want to spend some time in and so now that does not come at a cheap price. No, not every at all. Every time they want to go to Womp's Fortress, and, and typically they would want to go to Womp's Fortress every time. That means they have to enter a Hazy Maze Cave, see where they end up, and make their way down to that room. Exactly. And that's early information that Simply has on a stage yeah. in Metal Cup. That's going to be huge for him here. We'll see when the other two runners go and check out, because eventually they'll have to. Womp's Fortress is just too good of a stage. Absolutely. You typically get all seven stars there, so... So in this situation where we have our runners, uh, you know, now we're in a situation where, where Womp's Fortress is inside the, the metal cap check, do you think we're still going to be seeing all seven? I mean, that's that's the real question, exactly. is that is that it's not cut and dry. This this randomizer, it's not obvious how you make your choices, and not everyone's going to make those choices the same. Um, it, it would be very helpful if, you know, they, you know, maybe someone hedges their bets and, and tries to get them all out of Womp's Fortress and just prays for the good spawns in Hazy Maze Cave, but... I think the runners are going to try to get as far and uh, or far into the run and get close to 70, and then gauge how many times they have to re-enter HMC to get to Womps. That's true. You don't uh, have to make that decision up front. Exactly. I think they uh, they weigh their options, see where the other stars are, and go from there. Also good to keep in mind that the second MIPS does spawn at 50, so that will be another thing to route in with any other stages that they need to go to on the basement. Yeah, you definitely want to leave some options for getting yourself back down to the basement without just walking there so that you can come back for MIPS. Exactly. So there's two toads that are in the basement. One will give you the star, one doesn't. They have obviously found the one that does not give the star. So you see Chris still looking around, finding the second toad there, right in front of DDD. So Punkation right there showing us that that box was not inaccessible. It did turn out to be the star box, but it was not inaccessible. So, um, you know, got to make your way back to the cruiser a second time, I guess. Yep. Simply really taking advantage here of the fact that uh, Toltol Island is the wing cap location, um, because the nice thing is is that no matter where you end up, you can always exit course back to that exact spot and re-enter Toltol Mountain. Honestly, whatever is at that location almost becomes a self loop at that point. Exactly. You can pretty much throw it in with any sort of loop you're currently on whenever you feel like it. Say you finish like a, a TTC right away mm -hmm. instead of, you know, you can re-enter and just exit and go right to TTM whenever you feel like it. So. Another use of the pause strat there by Chris to look around and see where the stars are, able to find that star there. If you want to give us a donation, that would be... We've got a little bit of time for it. All right, I definitely have donations. So awesome. I've got $50 from Snoop who says, Hey, Author Blues, I love watching when you're on the mic in GDQ events ever since I saw your hilarious commentary of St. Million's run of episode one, The Phantom Menace. Put this donation to the One Mind run because we have to see that. We're just shy of 42,500, so need, you know, about 7,000 more. Uh, we have a few more donations that are aimed at our runners, so let me find a few more of those. We've got one here cheering on Chrism. Says $50 from Shinny D. Says donating and support Chrism. You're one of my favorite speedrunners, and these Mario randomizer runs are always amazing. Good luck. 
And we've got one cheering on Punk K to round out the three runners as well. We've got $25 from Wolven, says longtime watcher, first time donator. Greetings from the Kentucky Smash community. Always excited to see Punk K destroy Super Mario 64. We're all rooting for you and may the RNG gods be on your side. So thanks everybody who's donating, supporting the One Mind Hard Mode, and of course cheering on our racers here. Yeah, let's get a round of applause for our racers. Honestly, they're doing a really great job right now. Yeah. They're playing very well. No no really big mistakes that I've seen either. No, everything's been really solid so far. Uh, the difference between our runners is really just coming down to the choices they've made so far, and they haven't been bad choices. It's just this is all going to come together toward the end. That's exactly. really how this ends up working out. Once you start to get to about the high 50s, low 60s, you can start to gauge where they are. And again, I, I don't believe Punke or Kristen has checked the metal cap yet, so they don't know that Womps is there. Yeah, the thing about uh, this randomizer is just there's there's so many different choices you make along the way. Um, information is king. So, you know, when when you find that information, sometimes acting on it instantly, you know, you find a really great stage and you just go ahead and clear it out of all the stars. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Or you know it's there and you know it's something that you can add into your, your workflow. You can, you can pick that stage, you know, when you don't have a lot of other things to work on and you're sort of working through what your plan is in your head. Go to a stage that, that you can get some easy stars. Exactly. And it's all about taking into account the level layout there. If you if you don't love the layout, like you said, maybe you leave it for later on. If you think it's a good enough layout to knock everything out right away, then you go for it while it's fresh in your head. Oh, God. Wow. What a move. OK, I'm sorry. That was amazing. So I've that never, cage wall is so thin there. I've never seen that before. Exactly. Yeah, that cage wall is punishing, too, because they will push you through it just yes. as easily. Yes. So that's very well done by Simply there. Yeah, for these runners, especially for 70 star, I think Bowser in the Fire Sea is going to mostly end up being a wash. I mean, you know, if you end up with a good position, you may say to yourself, I'm going to go for red coins. Uh, you know, Bowser in the Fire Sea is pretty temperamental, though, because, you know, what if one of those red coins spawns right over the funnel going to Bowser? That can be really hard to grab and get back out of. Oh, definitely, so. definitely. And then you got to take into account how big the level is itself and where the star could spawn. You might go from the bottom of the level up to the top, and then the star spawns back at the bottom, and you're just wasting too much time going for one single star. I think I think that um, acquisition of information is really starting to make the difference now, um, because you know we've seen for a while Chrism and Simply have had a really close star count. You know they've been neck and neck, and Punkations was like ten stars away before. But I think he's starting to act on some of the information he's been collecting. He's found where those loops are and found the movement he wants to make, and he's just starting to pick them up rapid fire. Oh yes, his star count is going to start shooting up pretty fast here. It's going to be very fast. Wet Dry World itself is is such an easy one to just, I mean you can you can press the button and, and you're you're almost there instantly. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See Chris going for one of those for sure stars there, the rings. I so what stars do you go for in the um, in shifting sandlands in 70 star? You know, uh, the the pyramid is a pretty tight space that has a few freestanding stars, a few easy choices you can make. But what else are you really gaining in shifting sandland? Well, you got the freestanding star that's outside the pyramid. Mm -hmm. You have the one with the bird that, uh, and the talons of the yep. big bird there. Yep. Uh, you do have the freestanding star inside the pyramid that, that you could typically go for, and you can go for the boss, the I Rock boss there, because that's a consistent one. Absolutely. If you're not sure. Yeah, IROC's room is actually its own loading zone. Exactly. So it, when you go in there and you kill him, his star spawns right next to him. Exactly. That, as far as randomizer stars go, that is the most consistent one. If you can get in there, you've got it. Exactly. So if, if you're looking for one more star somewhere, that is a consistent one to go for. Uh, if you take a look around, you, you might be able to find, if you find three secrets right next to each other within the pyramid, you probably want to look for the other two and just hope they're not up high. Yeah. Best case scenario, you want to spawn up high and work your way down the pyramid, not climb up. And there's a lot of stages that actually work like that. We were talking about TikTok Clock before. Um, you know, TikTok Clock can be a frustrating stage to make your way from the bottom to the top. You spawn at the top, you kind of have a perfect view of everything down below. You can just grab whatever you want to. Exactly. Um, and so in stages like that, sometimes you might just forfeit the attempt you're at if you spawn toward the bottom and say, I'll come in again. You know, if you spawn at the very bottom of the level, why even bother? If I come in again, I've got a 50-50 shot of spawning the top half. Exactly, exactly. 
Good example of that also is Cool Cool Mountain. You spawn down below where the wall kicks will work area is. It's not a good time. It's a big time waste. And you risk uh, falling off the stage trying to get back to the other side of the stage. This is another example of something just like that. You know, Punkation right now is working on Red Coin Star um, inside uh, Tiny Huge Island. Um, this room. You know, none of the red coins can spawn up in Wiggler's part of the room, and they're not spawning outside this room. That so. was a previous issue. In oh, was it? Versions. Okay. Yes, we would have the star or coins spawn up there. I remember I remember early versions of this where sometimes you'd kill Wiggler and the star would spawn in the ceiling of yes. Wiggler's room. Yes. Like, oh, sorry. Again, previous versions were rough. <laughs> and it's important to denote uh, or, or, or note the difference between the ways this randomizer randomizes things. Some things are fixed. You know, you enter Tiny Huge Island and you see a box. That box is always there. Exactly. But, like, your spawn in the stage is random every single time. And in addition to that, when you do event stars, what we call event stars, so, for instance, when you kill Wiggler or, or you kill, uh, you know, Womp here in Womp's Fortress, um, that star is going to a completely random spot. And so sometimes you might find yourself in a situation where you perform form the event, you get the star and you say, I'm not going there. Yeah. I'm just going to give it another shot. <laughs> see second MIPS coming out there for Simply. He's going to be routing out more the secret stars, potentially more toads. I don't know if he needs one more toad, I think. I think yeah, I he's think... only gotten two. Not two. I two. think Chris might have all of the I, I toad believe, stars. I believe Chris Because does. we definitely saw two upstairs. Exactly. Um, and I, I think all of them found the basement one. If I'm oh, there we go. He sim simply just found okay. it now. Yeah, okay. there we go. Well, he's well positioned. Yes. Yeah, this stage is actually perfect for grabbing uh, coins. You know, you can get, you know, not a lot of people know, but uh, you can actually get 10 coins off of each of the, the wimps. Well, Close wimps. enough. The, yeah, the small, <laughs> the the small wimps. Um, <laughs> because not just the five you get for killing them, but um, when they fall down, you can actually jump on top of them five times. Each time you jump, you get an additional coin. Exactly. Uh, and so getting to 100 is actually pretty easy. You've got a bunch of opportunities for fives. You've got the blue coin switch. Uh, you've got red coins all over the place. You've got these really nice structures like the arrow um, always spawn together. Um, basically a freebie for 100 coins. Exactly. Again, like we mentioned before, there's typically two stages you always get hundreds in, Womps and Wet Dry World. Uh, the third one, if you're feeling confident, is TikTok Clock, because that could go pretty fast. The box. Yeah, there is the 35 coins right there exactly. in the middle. So. And if you get a lot of boxes together, a lot of those 10 coin boxes are huge. Yeah, you're already scouring the stage for, for star boxes. So along the way, I mean, if you don't get the star immediately, you probably identified, you know, 30, 40 coins that way. Do you have a moment for a few more? I do have a moment for a few donations, please. Okay. <laughs> I've got $1,000 from Instanote. Wow. They, thank you very much for that donation. And they say, oh, wow, I'm glad I stayed awake for this one. And it's been a great run so far. We also have uh, $25 from Hard Corpse Bro. It says, I always love these unique Mario runs. Randomizer in one mind, amazing. Good luck to all the runners. Keep up the good work. This donation is going towards the one mind hard mode run. And we did pass the 43,000, so we need about 6,500 to go now. It'd be great if we get that before the end of this run. Great clip there. And of course, we're going to close out with $200 from Jeff MCG, who says, why is So Toad so popular at parties? Because he's a fun guy. I'm able to leave the couch right now. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got Chrism. Uh, he's gotten both of the stars from the cruiser. Rainbow Ride is such a... It's, it, it's it a could be so good. I know. But it could be so bad. You have so many <laughs> seeds where, where Rainbow Ride is just, hey, would you like four stars right here? Mm -hmm. And then you have so many seeds where, sorry, they're all on the roof. Yeah. So, t I mean, typically you could find one or two down below, but when you have it to where there's two, even one star on the roof, you're just thinking, all right, probably not going to go for that one at all. The carpet just takes way too much time. Then you have to start throwing in some other stars that you're maybe already counting out, and it's just tough. 
Yeah, Lethal Lava Land is another stage. It, it can be temperamental, but um, most of the stars relatively straightforward in their execution. Two of them are freestanding inside the volcano. Dip inside there anytime you want to to grab them. Uh, the red coins are all over. If you've got the wing cap, you can get the red coins really straightforward. Exactly. Um, you've got the main bully star. You've got the small bully star. Um, There's another freestanding star in uh, outside the volcano as well. Exactly. So. So Lethal Lava Land, while while it can be a difficult stage to navigate, that's not a problem for these runners. Exactly. Um, that would be a problem for you or me. But Definitely. but this stage uh, is a really nice one in Randomizer just because there's so many easily accessible stars. And now we're getting into that point of the, the run where you start to look at stages and see what you've ga gathered already from those stages, what's worth it to go for, what you might need to go for. Yeah, at this point, they have all the information on the table. You know, exactly. you, you can't see it here on stream necessarily. I think you can you can see it a little bit in the webcam. Um, but all of these runners have a tracker with them. They're keeping detailed notes about everything they've seen so far. You know, they're not just memorizing this. They're not jumping into random paintings. They have a plan. Um, and at this point, they've gathered about as much information as they can expect to get before the end of the run. There's not a lot more that's going to come to them. Uh, and so now's the point where they have to start deciding, okay, that, that stage that I passed up earlier because it was in a bad spot, do I go back there? Do I keep digging in some other locations? Do I maybe make the way back to Womp's Fortress, even though it's in Hazy Maze Cave? Um, you, know, you have to make those choices. Exactly. I think Womp's Fortress is one of the worst ones to see there, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is. If it were a stage like uh, Cool Cool Mountain or Bob on Battlefield, you could kind of write it off. Those are slow yeah, stars. Exactly. Uh, I, maybe I won't bother. Um, but Womp's Fortress, they're all just coming at you. It's, it's, those, those stars are really easy to grab, typically, and now you've put them slightly further out of reach. Exactly. And that's the beauty of Randomizer. Looks like Punkation's hunting around for the... Uh, Basement Toad Star. I believe so. Um, sometimes you can just find yourself in a situation, and this is really common in randomizer runs where you've gotten into such a habit of navigating the castle through paintings, you know, jump in a painting, jump back out, jump back in, that you haven't really been keeping a close eye on what toads are where. Uh, you haven't been keeping a close eye on when new ones have appeared. Uh, and so finding the remaining Toad Star, like he did right there, can actually be a task of just, okay, I'm going to walk up to every one of them and say hi. Yeah good to try to wrap that in with your route too if you're done with the stage that you've just jumped out of mm -hmm. it might be a good time to go for those just toads. look around a little looking bit looking around while you're heading towards that next stage Chris doing a great job of exactly. staying out of the water that's really what you want in metal cap the red coins are not hard to collect in this one this one is a really good choice for getting the red coins nicely done there really Grab really the good one. execution I don't know if you saw it there yeah, there you go okay there you go Excellent. Nicely done, yeah. Very well executed there. Punkation uh, managed to freeze the clock uh, last time he saw the clock face, uh, and so he's getting a really good opportunity to stop and get a good vantage point of the stage. Just wants to figure out what he's looking at for the most part. You know, it, it's not enough to just, he saw a star jump straight into it. Take the time to look around. Chris missing the star there, I believe he, I think he landed on the enemy there. We missed that. The star just does not want to be got. Yeah, and sometimes you get those enemies that are just in that spot. Right. Like if you're trying to jump onto a ledge, knock you right down. Honestly, having a hard time grabbing the star is the best possible scenario because what's worse is when you're jumping into the water for every single red coin. That's eight times you're just swimming to the back, coming forward. Oh, yeah. Get a situa situation like that you definitely don't want to be in. A nice star pick up there for simply getting close to the 70 count here. Yeah, not too far off. It's very close here. And Punkation still has a lot of free stars there he can get. He can catch right up really fast, so it's really still anybody's game. Yeah, from what from what we've seen, we haven't seen Punkation grab a lot of the really fast stars. So I'm wondering whether or not he's been saving them up, pulling them, he's got a plan for them. Um, I, I certainly would not uh, rule him out by any means. This is a nice thing about these runners having such a, a, a good handle on 
um, moving around these stages in ways that you really don't see in normal speedruns. I think that's one of the things that I love the most about randomizer is that there's typically no reason to know how to navigate certain parts of stages. There's yeah. no reason that you would need to know how to, what's the shortest distance between these two spots. And, and it really shows the difference between runners who have memorized the speedrun and, and have gotten a good handle on that. And people who just know how to move a Mario. Yes, right? exactly. One thing I want to bring up about the, the bob -omb King here is this is actually a pretty decent spot for the King. Um, it there, could be way worse. Yes, because the way it works is if the bob -omb King is on a slope and walks down that slope, the game thinks that he's fallen off of his original fighting platform and he'll reset his position and you'll have to refight him. So the fact that he's not on a slope is very good. Chris heading back here into Womp's Fortress. Um, honestly, I think toward the end of each of these, we're gonna see them hitting Womp's Fortress pretty hard. I think once you get to this point in the seed, you know, you're in the 60s, you know, you just need a few more. You can, you could probably find other stars that are gonna be quicker than navigating all of HMC just to get to Womp's Fortress, but you know they're there in Womp's Fortress. Exactly. It's, one, it's a situation, again, where if, say, if he's at 65 stars, he knows there's five more left in Womps. He has a guaranteed five there. Maybe he can pick one or two more out somewhere else, but he has those guaranteed stars in his back pocket. And since simply uh, brought the ship up, that means the eel has moved into the spot, mm -hmm. uh, that he can actually use it to get the event star. So, um, you know, sort of two for the price of one almost. Exactly. You, you get one of those stars, you get both of them. Yeah. Um, and that's, an, uh, that's a pretty easy choice in randomizer. There's no reason not to go for that. Exactly. And that's typically the four stars you'll see. Uh, if you're really struggling, you might see a red coin come out from there, but most likely not. Yeah, chests and uh, red coins are so situational in that stage. Red coins in general are just so situational. Sometimes you just find yourself in a stage, it's not a particularly large stage, and you find a whole bunch of coins at once, and you say, why not? That's what we're doing this time. Exactly. Especially if you're just gathering information, one of the things I like to do is, if you're going for red coins, you can take into account what other stars are there as Absolutely. you're collecting those red coins. A stage that's good for that, for example, is Tall Tall Mountain. Especially if you start at the bottom and work your way up, you can mark where each star is in your head and then get the red coin star, then revisit to get those stars you've retained information for. Yeah, you definitely have to be careful with the King bob -omb fight because having him drop even a little bit sometimes can be enough for the game to treat it as if he got thrown off the edge. You know, that's how the game detects that he gets thrown off the, the mountain is that he, he lowers further than where he started the spawn. So you can get spawns where he's just on a slope and just the act of walking down the, sl uh, the slope like five steps, exactly. he says, sorry, I'm out. Yes, exactly. Now walking up is totally fine. That doesn't nope. cause him to reset. So if you see him on that long slope in BOB, you have to walk, walk him, him all up. the way to the top. And it's a long walk. I have a big one when you have a moment. Go for it. Yes. I've got $10,000 from the Yeti. Wow. They say, hey all, Yeti here. I'm simply having a wonderful time watching this run. I can't imagine the mental gymnastics involved in trying to keep track of all the randomized routes for a run like this. Major props to all the racers. Let's give them a big round of applause. And of course, cooking under that one, we've got $100 from my front where He says, it's awesome to see runners with such a depth of knowledge of a game that they can adapt on the fly with a randomizer. Good luck to the runners, and try not to honk, I mean bonk. <laughs> so we saw Punkation, you know, riding the slope to get into town. Um, don't want to necessarily have to open up the cannon. It's slow. It's, it um, is slow, yes. Yeah, so he, he, he rides the slope to get over there. Um, two pretty easy stars over there in town. I mean, that's a place you want to be. Uh, it's got the freestanding star, it's got a uh, red coin star, and all those red coins are just like right in there perfectly, so. Exactly. And a cool fun fact to know about the randomizer as well is that there's so many different options, so many different seeds you can do. I believe there are a little bit over 65,000 seeds. Yep. Uh, it accepts uh, a seed number from 1 to 65, 535, so. There's a lot of options for this randomizer. We actually chose our seed based on the donation total when this run started, so thank you for helping these runners pick their seed.
Tall Tall Mountain, such a great stage to find, especially if you can find it in a good location. Oh, yes, um, definitely. You know, with the exception of maybe a uh, 100 coin star, most of them are just really yes. easy to get. Exactly. And even then, I think in, a, in the right setting, you might even see a runner grab a 100 coin star in, in 70 star. Yeah, it would have to be a, a pretty rough seat, I'd say. But overall, uh, I think you're right. I think five, five stars for sure. Um, six and seven if you can. The red coins, honestly, are not a bad pickup in Tall Tall Mountain. No. See Chris getting close to that, that count. Very close. Simply not too far behind. Punk is still going for the fast stars in Womps here. Curious to see what last two stars. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what he's got saved up. Yeah, it looks like he's going back for Womps again here. Uh, last time he entered HMC, he had a beautiful spawn. He actually spawned in the Metal Cap room. This time on not, the opposite Still not side. a bad location, though. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can end up clipping down into the caverns. Exactly. Um, which, you know, we were talking before about how it's a little annoying, um, the fact that you have to go through Hazy Maze Cave every single time to get to whatever is in Metal Cap. But honestly, there's so many different ways in this stage to get down exactly. there that it almost doesn't feel that punishing. Right, exactly. Well, as punishing. Right. Simply also going for the Womps entrance here. Yeah, it looks like it looks like for sure Prism and and Simply have decided to to round this out with Womps Fortress. Yes. So just one more start. What do you think it is? Looks like he's uh, picking one of the Wet Dry World ones. I, I'm actually surprised because uh, I'm having so many Wet Dry World stars left uncollected um, that he didn't focus on this, but given how easy it was to access Hazy, access Hazy Maze Cave, that doesn't surprise me terribly. Yeah, Secret seems like a pretty good choice right here. You're guaranteed that the Secrets are all on this half of the level. Um, there's only a few spots in this stage that would be bad spawns for one of the secrets. So. Exactly. And it's it's really not that big of an area, so it's not that bad. Uh, secrets are definitely a good option here. He's definitely being careful not to hit any of those uh, water changers. The oh. worst thing you can do in this stage uh, is to hit one of those water changers uh, and, and bring the water level way up, and then it's just a pain to navigate. Like that one right there. That is a, a terrible spot there. but A mean spot, the yeah, for sure. Simply goes into Wing Mario over the rainbow and says, no thanks. Nope. <laughs> Definitely one of the slowest stars you can go for, and riskiest, too. Yeah, absolutely. That marks 70 for Chris. He's going to be working his way up to Bowser in the sky. We'll see what kind of strats he does here. He does have seven lives, so one of the things he can do here is enter the stage, see where he spawns. If he doesn't like it, he can jump off the stage, re-enter, and try to get a close spawn. You can get as close as right next to the pipe, so we'll see what he goes for here. Yeah, I mean, the way it ends up working out, you have a 50-50 shot of ending up in the second half of the level, right? If all spots are relatively equal, then every time you enter, you have a 50-50 shot of spawning half more than halfway through the level. You end up with a bad spawn, you say, screw it, I'm jumping off the side. Exactly, and this is good enough for him, so yeah, he's going he's for it. Happy with it. He actually made a really smart choice. Uh, one of the routing decisions you, you do kind of want to think about is what is your last star going to be? You're always going to the same location at the exactly. end of the game. Uh, and he made a, a pretty smart choice, un intentional or unintentional, uh, to get his last star somewhere that dropped him off upstairs. Exactly, exactly. Obviously, one of the best places to end up is TTC or Rainbow Ride. So we got Simply now. Uh, yep, only one close. star left to go. And Punke, only about 10 to go. I mean, he, he's right at the end now with, with enough information to really probably have quite a few stars to round this out. Exactly. This is actually a very, very good pace for Chris right here. Fantastic. This does give Simply a little more time. Simply's looking around for that last star. He made the same choice, too, to save his last one for something that's going to take him upstairs. Exactly. Maybe not, I mean, probably not enough to catch up with someone who's only got one Bowser throw left. Yeah, but let's see if he nails it. Oh, and he hits it. And time will be coming up soon here for Chris. Yeah, time coming up for Chris. Simply now got his last star, and he's heading up the same direction. Exactly. 
And time for Chris. Very nicely done, a 58-29 is an incredible time. That is very well done. Simply, like you mentioned before. Simply only a few minutes away. A good spawn here. He could still be... Yep. Uh, okay, sorry. Looks like it's still good enough for him to, to take the level, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's not going to jump out for that. Exactly, but. yeah. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> That was a, a great time, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, we didn't pick the seat, okay? GDQ picked the seat. Yes. You know, honestly, you fall that far. I mean, I don't know, me personally. I'd be jumping off. I'd be jumping off. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get in there, I'm like, nope, we're just gonna retry that. You know, we, we didn't really mention it. Uh, it's not something that comes up in, in vanilla, obviously, but um, one of the interesting things about Hazy Maze Cave, it's such a broad stage, it can be so hard to find stars. One of the neat things, though, is that um, when you're in the stage, there are some spots you can stand where you can look up or look around and actually see stars at quite a distance. And if you have a pretty good mental map of the stage, you can look in a direction, see a star way over there and say, I know roughly where that's located. That can really narrow down the search. Oh, it's huge, definitely. Simply here going for the final Bowser here. Able to get the first throw. So Punkation's keeping a close eye on his notes. I, I think I think he has a plan in place. You know, he's got some stages. He's aware of what stars he's collected so far. He knows kind of what he wants to do. Yeah, he's been keeping really detailed notes, uh, exactly. which is which is exactly what you need. You definitely need to. And with that, simply, uh, with his last Bowser throw, we're going to get time on simply in just a moment. Time there for simply. One hour there is still a very very good time. Yeah, it's Very impossible well to really keep track of exactly which stars you've <laughs> It's impossible to keep track of exactly what stars you found, but the tracker uh, can can at least tell you, you know, you've got three freestanding stars, you've got an event star, you've got a box star, and you can use that information exactly. um, to keep track of that stuff yeah. pretty well. Looks like Punky will be heading back to Womps again, a very consistent stage. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's one you can guarantee you're getting stars in. Exactly. I think right now he's kind of in between a few ideas. I know when I play randomizer, a lot of times, if I'm not quite sure what I want to do at a, a given moment, if I if I haven't quite formulated my plan, you know, sometimes I'll have saved stages, just easy, brainless stars I can get, while I kind of think about, okay, do I want to go this route? Do I want to do this thing? Um, and that's a, that's definitely something that you have to think about. You have to figure out where are you going to take the time to actually stop and think about your, your routing. Exactly, exactly. So I've got some donations when you've got a moment. Yep. Go for it. We've got $10 from Esmo says, Auth is doing such a great job on the mic right now. I feel so bad about making one mind even more difficult for him. But I don't feel quite as bad about making giving more of a challenge to lack attack. Let's make this goal. <laughs> I also have twenty-five dollars from Miss Missa. Who says the Super Mario sixty four randomizer is the one I've been looking forward to all week. It is definitely looking living up to the hype. Thanks to Chrism, Simply, and Punkation for such a fun race. Yeah, let's get another round of applause for our runners. Yeah. Give Punkation your energy. I also have $25 from Scrivo. It says, hello, author blues, lowercase a. Your pal Scrivo here. Good luck to you and lack on the one mind run. I'm sure you have it all under control. Wait, no, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Now you do. I'm so confused. Oh, well, good luck anyway. Have fun donating for hard mode. And we're, we just passed 45,500, so we need 4,500 more to go. Let's try to get that met before the SMW starts. Here we go! 
I'm interested to see what Star's Punkation has left to go for here. Yeah, I've kind of been yeah. trying to eye his tracker a little bit, seeing what's, what's left in some of the stages that he might be saving toward the end. He's definitely right now hitting Womp's Fortress over and over, and I, I, I would do exactly the same thing oh, right definitely, now. Yeah. You're Womp's getting toward, good. you're getting toward the end of the seed. Uh, a lot of your other options, you've seen them, you don't love them. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Exactly. At least Womp's Fortress, at least you can trust in Womp's Fortress. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, it looks like we're gonna go ahead and and wrap it up. Punkation's made the decision to to not see this one to the end, and that's I get it. Uh, gonna... Let's, yeah. Big round of applause for all the runners here. Yeah. This seed had some rough spots in it. Yeah. Okay. So I get it. Um, I totally. I wouldn't be able to finish this one. Trust me. <laughs> you want to do a few shout yeah. outs? What up, everybody? That's Big Samp in the house. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Punk A, but yeah, randomizer is pretty cool. 144 is my best time ever, and Chrism destroyed both of us, so that was pretty cool. But um, yeah, right now in Super Mario 64, there's a lot going on. There's a bounty for $5,000 for the next person to get a 138 and 120 star. And so me, Punkation, and a couple other people are grinding, Liam, Paracusia, so it's a really cool hunt. A lot of people have been really close, myself included, and Punke. So check out our streams on Twitch. We're grinding every day after AGDQ is done. Shout out to everybody at AGDQ. This is so awesome. I, I love this venue. Shout out to Raccoon, killing it on the donations. Absolutely slaying it. And thank you to the gentleman. Fine gentleman on the couch. Good games, Chris. And um, my booty is bopping is now on all streaming <laughs> services, all platforms. Please check it out. It is incredible. Thank you so much, and have a good one. All right, thanks one more time to all of our runners in the couch. That was amazing. We just hit $46,000 for one mind, so let's try and get that met. I've got one donation here, $101.01 from Ultimate Mango that says, let me get ready for this, 01000100000100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100100
All right, welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2020, powered by Twitch. My screen name is Covert Muffin, and I'm going to be leading up the hosting station for the next couple of runs. And hype indeed, because we have some tons of donations coming in. Thank you so much for the support. The next run coming up is indeed going to be a Super Mario World One Mind co-op run with Author Blues and Lack Attack 24. And so if you would like to see the control of the character swapped every 0.5 seconds, we have just over $3,000 to go. So keep those donations coming in, and let's close that out before the run even begins. Yeah, let's go Twitch chat. All right, and Twitch chat seems to be responding with a $5 donation from LaCoupo that says, I want to see the SMW One Mind run in hard mode. So let's get a donation train going. Oh man, the train does seem to be going. We have $5 from OmniBelt114 that said, did I hear a $5 train for One Mind Hard Mode? Choo choo, let's make this train roll. Wow, and we only have just over 200, no, $160 to go. That We just closed thousands of dollars in mere seconds. Come on, Twitch chat. Wow, and speaking of hype, we have a $1,000 donation from Adam T30. And there is no comment with that, but thank you so much, Adam. And we have hit that incentive. We're going to see One Mind on hard mode. Thank you so much, folks. I am super pumped to see that run. But before we get there, while our runners are still getting set up, we're going to throw it over to Keyseron with an interview with the Super Mario 64 randomizer crew. Take it away, Keys. Are you guys sick of me yet? I've been here all day. <laughs> anyway, you know me as Keyseron, obviously. And we have the SM64 rando runners here. How are all of you doing? Thank Very you. good. Pretty good. Pretty hype race. Pretty yeah. excited to watch that. So I kind of want to talk about like the history of the SM64 Rando. So I'll, I'll throw it your way, simply. So basically, it started out, and it was really buggy. And it would crash a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it kind of worked out the kinks. But it was always sort of the same from the beginning. But sometimes stars would like spawn out of bounds. And so if you were planning to be like, oh, I'll get this star in TTC, sometimes they'd just be out of bounds. You couldn't get them. And then over time, it's, it's all kind of worked out. And now it doesn't seem to crash at all. So it's. I mean, it would be pretty, pretty well. unfortunate if it crashed, especially if right now, you know. Yeah. yeah. That'd, be, that'd be pretty rough. So with something like this where there's, it's obviously randomized, so you got to really figure out what to do on the fly. So how do you, how do you mentally approach routing something like that? Like, it's, it's a little unique in the sense of mm -hmm. it's not like a Pokemon randomizer. Like, yeah. you and I are super familiar with that. It's just a Pokemon shows up randomly. But this is literally throwing you all over the place. So how do you even approach routing like that? Mm, generally, every stage has a set of stars you always want to get. It doesn't matter where they are. And that number is about 66, 67 maybe. And then there's also a few that you'll skip in this seat, but not in this one, based on mm -hmm. where the stage is. Like in our seat right now, Womp's Fortress was in the worst possible spot yep. in the middle of HMC's Metal Cap. 
Right. So, and traveling there takes so much time. So I personally didn't get every star in WOMPs. Yeah, I, I got a couple, but it's just yeah, like, couple, it's got, not worth how long it takes to get there. It's not worth traveling all the way. So I, we skipped those and focused on slower stars and other stages. Right. Now, in a case like this where you guys are racing, are there any stars that you would maybe consider going after, kind of like as a YOLO play? Hmm. Uh, the, the biggest YOLO play in Randomizer is when you know there's a star on the top of the castle in Rainbow Ride, <laughs> and you keep re-entering the level yeah. over and over again until you spawn on top of the castle. <laughs> That's the biggest YOLO play. Yeah, if you're, if you're in that position, it's really scary, because you're just you're you don't want to ride the carpet. RNG. The carpet takes like a minute and a half. Right? Yeah, so you got to do carpetless. <laughs> exactly, you spawn on top of the house. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave after hearing that joke. <laughs> <laughs> now, like an approach. Oh, you're throwing it back at me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an approach like this. So we got Rando versus like vanilla. Um, obviously, other than the routing and on the fly changes, is there really any other different approach to it, or is it just kind of play the game, get your technique down, get whatever trick you can pull off? Are you talking about vanilla? It's kind of comparing between randomizer and vanilla. Yeah, I feel like randomizer requires a lot less prep. Like, if you've played vanilla, you don't really need to, because you're going to do different movement every single time, and you're in a different spot every time. So I remember when I first got into randomizer, like, I was obviously very comfortable with the vanilla game, but I was so clunky. Like, I was not used to the way that I was moving and getting around the stages. So it definitely takes some getting used to, to be like, okay, there's a lot of slopes. This slope is dumb, and it won't work. So <laughs> yeah, you learned so much. You did so much stuff about the game you didn't know before, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Are there any other games that you guys play that you might like to see a randomizer of that you might want to race eventually? Well, I personally, and I know you do, a lot of Pokemon randomizer. Of that stuff is so good. Um, I don't know if there's any other. It would, it would be cool if there would be like a Sunshine yeah. randomizer. Yeah, that could be cool. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. We could do something like similar to this. So uh, we're going to throw it to some social media questions real quick. We did get a few. So we'll start with at Witching Media. At what point during the race did the difficulty really ramp up? Mm, the ending. Mm -hmm. and you're, because you're frustrated. W which stars do I get now yeah. that I got all the easy ones and obvious ones already? When, when I discovered that um, Metal Cap goes to Womps, <laughs> like, I, I just want to leave the room. Right? That's, like, <laughs> that's the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, that's that, that is awful. awful. And I was like, this, has, this just has to happen on a, on a GDQ randomizer, <laughs> doesn't it? Of, of course. I mean, it's, it's GDQ tradition at this point in time for something like that to happen, like, right? Well, preferably, you'd want it to go to, like, Win Mario of the Rainbow, because you don't get that star. That's, like, perfect. Yeah. Right. That's, like, worst case scenario. Now, I kind of did touch up on this a little bit, but uh, from Nick Knack Nick 11 that's a lot of Nicks, uh, what do you think about when choosing to do certain stars while skipping others? It really just depends on the seed, like, like how in this one, okay, Womps is usually you'll get every single star in Womps because they're so fast, even like fighting the Womp King, and sometimes 100, I don't, I don't usually do 100, but you get at least five stars from Womps, but obviously in this seed, it took way too long to get there, so then obviously we're going to skip it, but in terms of like if you can get to the level relatively easily and you can find it within a certain amount of time, like BBH, sometimes there's a star oh, yeah. that you can't find. Like, you know it's there, B but B it just won't show up. always uh, either you get one or you get three. Right. It's, and it's, it's so random. The nope. stage is awful. Yeah, you got to know when to cut your losses. Yeah. I just, you just spend too much time. I just wanted to bring up uh, Womps again because, like, Metal Cap went there. I decided to do 100 coin because that's yeah, two that's stars in one trip. That's this what I did. like, yeah. the smartest decision. Interesting. I did not do that. <laughs> I'd say it's the smartest decision, but I got annihilated. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Like, I thought I was doing fine, and I'm like, okay, Chrism's done. Sibley's probably close. A couple minutes later, he gets up. I'm like, wow, I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It was still a good showing regardless. Now, we do have this from at Wolfman 2020. Uh, I say 2020. 2000. I can read. I promise. Um, how accessible is the randomizer to those who do not know all the glitches or the advanced movement tech? I think it's pretty tough to beat if, you, if you're new to Mario 64, but everyone should be able to beat it in 70 star at least. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone can pull off a 70 star playthrough. Do you guys have uh, any favorite courses, as asked by JVGL, both in vanilla and randomizer? Uh, tick tock clock, probably. In both? Mm, in vanilla for sure. Um, randomizer, probably like Womps. Yep. Mm. I, I think I like Wet Dry World the most in vanilla. And also TTC and Rando. Yeah. And yourself? TTC, Vanilla, and Womps, and Rando. Because it's just so free. 
<laughs> you know you're gonna have a good time. You copied me. Because <laughs> I love you. Uh, this, this is a little bit of a, of a flex for me, not gonna lie. But this is from Vesper. If you had to choose any other N64 game for another randomizer, what would it be? Hashtag bring back keys and fees. <laughs> oh, there's some fans out there. You, you poor fools. <laughs> Banjo Kazooie. That could uh, be right. cool. All right, that actually, yeah. yeah Donkey, actually Donkey Kong 64. Donkey. But that, that game runs at like 12 frames per second. <laughs> well, fix that too. <laughs> oh, just, just, just make it a, a 60 frame per second with the randomizer. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to talk about prizes again. I, I know it was a disaster last time. We do have a little bit of organization going on this time. So um, I did mention before there's a massive Sony prize pack. Like, it is absolutely ginormous. It's wow, that's a, huge. It is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a $75 minimum donation, and it goes until the end of control. You have limited edition, collector's editions, whatever you want to call them, of uh, Death Stranding, God of War, Horizon. Uh, you get a bunch of like, different statues and stuff. De Death Stranding even comes with like a case for one of the statues. A uh, couple of extra controllers so you can set it up, play with your friends right off the bat. Really, really big prize pack, so definitely get your donations in. We also have, I don't have it with me, but we have Honk's Awakening banner, because you, you guys love the goose. <laughs> so what better way than to have a banner celebrating AGDQ, uh, I can talk, I promise, AGDQ 2020, good job, Keys. Honk's Awakening banner, $50 minimum donation, and that's open until the end of the marathon. We also have a custom GDQ PC from the Yeti, $100 minimum donation. Once again, until the finale, we could all use a really nice PC to play on, for sure. And then, of course, we have the grand prize, which $200 minimum donation, Heroic Replicas will make a custom replica with some restrictions of pretty much anything you want. We have, like, the Hylian Sword and Shield that we've seen in the past, we could maybe make, a, I don't know, a giant TikTok Whoa. background for SM64. Maybe a giant dog <laughs> anamorph. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of stuff you could do there. Be sure to get those donations in. Once again, I was Keyzron, and I was joined by probably three of the coolest people you're going to meet at GDQ. Aww. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you for that excellent interview, Keyzron. That was great. Speaking of which, we have a lot of hype lined up for you guys tonight and plenty of runs and incentives to be met. That being said, the next incentive on the docket is for the control run coming up a bit later. And so if you're looking for a bit of meme potential, you could unlock the dynamite music video that happens uh, pretty close to the second half of the run itself. And that still has about 7,500 to go. So keep those donations coming in and make sure you are putting them towards an incentive. Oh, yes. Woo! Yeah. Speaking of which, we have $25 from Nicholas P. that says, very excited for the Super, Super Mario World Run. Good luck to the runners. Thank you, Nicholas. We also have $20 from Mary Kate that says, let's see Lario and Muigi in action. One Mind Hard Mode hype! We also have a pretty big donation coming in from Kyle245 for $500. <laughs> Kyle says, the world lost an absolute magical legend this week to cancer. This one goes out to Neil Pert of Rush, who helped shape and inspire many lives through his drumming, creativity, lyrics, composition, and dedication to his craft. Huge thanks to GDQ for providing a venue for so many generous and wonderful people to fight and take our loved ones back from this awful sickness. No, thank you so much, Kyle, and every single person who has donated to this event. Thank you, guys. Yeah. A 
as a quick reminder, here at AGDQ 2020, we indeed are raising money for Prevent Cancer Foundation. The Prevent Cancer Foundation, founded in 1985, is a US-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. Thank you, Prevent Cancer Foundation. We are proud here at AGDQ to be raising money for you.